The signs were there that I was out of the squad. Nishim was opening the batting, Baz was batting in the middle order. Um, and I decided I turned down a tour to the UAE for the A-side because I wanted to play what I thought was going to be my last domestic season. Actually, the only time I knew I was going to be playing in the World Cup was when the squad was picked, and that was in Christchurch prior to that series against Sri Lanka. Yeah, I had that, that innings um, with Ronke, that world record, and that kind of established me. I started playing some good cricket, and everyone in our team actually made some good scores during that Sri Lankan series. And it wasn't a, uh, it, was, it was quite a good Sri Lankan team, but we played so well, and everyone had a, you know, a hand in winning a game. So it was great confidence in the lead up to the World Cup. Probably the most significant things that made a difference in our environment was that no matter what game it was, what, whatever we did and how we prepared was the same. We kept the same team, so there was consistency in that. Everyone knew their roles. We played a lot of one day cricket leading up to this tournament and we had the crowd behind us. So the fact that, you know, we were out here against Australia and Kane hit that, that shot to win the, the game against Australia, that really did get the whole nation behind us. I felt this real uh, belief within the team. You know, the way Baz played the World Cup, his strategy was to bowl out Southie and, and, uh, and bolt. So a lot of the time we got to the 40th over and we look around the field and go, I wonder who's going to bolt the death here. You know, if it, if it took that long, but like, luckily, you know, Saudi and, and Bolt were on fire during the tournament. So there weren't a lot of times where we were under pressure because we had the tail enders in anyway. But this was a moment where, you, you know, you're at Eden Park, it's quite a small field, and you've got AB, one of the, you know, Mr. 360, and who's batting well, and then Miller. So I think there were six overs to go. And yeah, I, I was definitely going to bowl a couple of those overs, so I was a bit nervous. So the rain played its part, which was awesome. It was the perfect time for the rain to actually come down. The runs we needed, you sort of had to take risks, um, maybe one or two risks and over at that stage. Um, and you got world-class bowlers bowling to you. So I think you just, you play your game. And the, the beauty about cricket is when you're actually not thinking, that's when you play well. And I was sort of in that mode. I was on sort of, you know, 50, 60, and that's when you're pretty much in the zone. I felt like I was playing well, you know. I felt I'd been playing quite well all tournament, so I just hadn't had a, a long innings, and this was my opportunity. Semi-finals, this is, this is it. it. Looks different as a rugby park, eh? It does. Doesn't look as good. <laughs> I, I think Dan and I are probably quite thoughtful, like we do think through things, and you know, there is strategy, and. You know, I know that at a moment like that, the bowl is under as much pressure as you are. You know, in that over, there were, there were moments where I hit a full toss the first ball. And after I, you know, I cloth batted it to mid off, I thought oh, that was the ball, you know? That was to get us eight or five, you know? That's the game, you feel like. And you can see my body language. I just sort of like, you know, slump a little bit. And then there was the moment where, you know, Dan squeezed one out. And the funny thing about that is, is Mornay Morkel told me, he said, oh, I think I won you guys the World Cup, see me. And I was like, oh, how's that? And he goes, well, I moved, you know, five meters to the right before that ball that Dan squeezed, because I thought he'd hit it fine. So, you know, you know, and he just missed him on his left. So, you know, had he stayed in that position, maybe it wouldn't have been four. Would have been a tough ask from there. Um, but there was a stage where Dan went, right, you know, it's up to you. And that was with two balls to go. I remember that message and then I just remember feeling a little bit more pressure on me. Well the fact that mid-on was up and mid-off was up during that delivery, that suggests that it's going to be back of a length or short. So I always thought, well if it is the Yorker, I'll go back in the crease um, and then across so that I can get the ball on my body and then if it is back of a length or short, I've got the ability to just hit it towards the leg side. So wherever the ball was going, I was, going to have a, I was going to have a proper dip because I thought, well, we've got two chances to get the boundary. If I get my poles knocked out, well, then Timmy can come in. <laughs> <laughs> and he can do it. <laughs> As I hit it, I hit it a bit high up on the bat. And I thought, oh, I'm not too sure. And at Eden Park, you've got the LED lights that sort of, as you look up, you can't really see, they sort of blind you a bit. So I looked, looked down, looked up, and then I saw the ball just sort of appear above them and then I knew I'd, I'd got it, so. The sound was unbelievable. 
It just feels like people are on top of you. It's probably more a golf swing, but that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> it was a huge relief, to be honest. Ecstasy mixed with relief. There's a number of emotions that just pour through you. And then, you know, to celebrate it, see your teammates on the side, because at Eden Park, they're pretty close anyway. Um, and then after that, make sure I hug Dan so that he didn't get disappointed. He always says that I should have hugged him first before I celebrated, so... Yeah, I mean, you can't make everyone happy, right? <laughs> Especially Vittori. Um, that was the first time that Saudi went, oh, now you're a Kiwi. Otherwise, you know, before the game, I'm pretty sure him and Vittori both said, which anthem are you singing today? Yes, I hit the winning shot, but Dan's shot was just as important, you know, to squeeze that, like a Vittori classic, you know, Brendan's 50 of 22, and the way the guys bowled in the rain, of course. I played beer pong till about 4.30. Saudi was my partner, and we did quite well. <laughs> I think, you know, straight after the, the hug with Dan, um, you know, then you start shaking hands. And as I said before, you, you know, humble in the victory, humble in defeat. I think that's when you realise, you know, that empathy towards the opposition. They've obviously lost, they're down, like there was a couple of guys lying on the ground and um, they're obviously devastated. And I saw Dale next to me, so, you know, just extended the hand to him. So as I said, I was in quite a good space where I thought, well, you know, sport doesn't really, you know, you're hitting a leather ball around the field. How much difference are we making in this world? You know, on another day, potentially South Africa win that game, you know. There were so many moments in that last over that could have gone either way. So to be able to show your face in the opposition change room is sometimes the hardest thing to do. And the fact that they, they did, I think, shows what a, a great bunch of guys they are.